Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. My name's Jack, this is JHH Books, and it is time for the April reading wrap up. So, first of all, an apology. I have to make an apology. I did not read the book that you all voted for this month. I'm sorry. I have a, a little bit of an explanation. I was unwell. Like, believe it or not, sometimes I plan things out on this channel, and the week I was planning to read it and film it, I was unwell. I didn't get out of bed for two weeks. I didn't eat for eight days. I was very, very unwell. If you've been here before, you know I get unwell sometimes. So it just didn't happen. And I feel terrible. I feel bad. I put them back in the jar. So, you know, we might get to read them eventually. Um, and I just feel bad. I'm sorry. But if we thought March was bad for me, April was ten times worse. Ten times worse. Like, oh, what a bad month. It was... I'm excited to be in May and move forward and, and, you know, have a new month because April was bad, man. April was bad for me. <laughs> but you are not here to hear about my sub story, are you? Let's be honest. Um, Now, I managed to read eight books, but I need you to know that I did not read for two weeks in the middle. I didn't do anything apart from watch, um, like, eating challenges on the internet or, like, Things about Disney Cruise Line, because, well, if you remember I went on a Disney Cruise last year, maybe let's just say, who knows? Who knows what's happening this year? Who knows? Um, so, yeah, it was just a, it was a shambles. It was an absolute shambles this month. But um, I managed to read eight books, but I had a very strong start, and I sort of forced myself at the end. So, you know, I think if I had not been ill, I reckon I could have... I would have hit double digits in April. I absolutely would have hit double digits. I reckon we could have been talking about 13 books because there was nothing I loved more than reading at the beginning of this month. It was my joy, my heaven, but it soon faded. But I have sort of got it back at the end of the month. So we're going into May strong. We're going into May strong, but let's talk about the books. So first up this month, I listened to an audio book and that was This Winter by Alice Oseman. Cover is here. Um... This was a sort of a story set sort of around Christmas, maybe Christmas Day. And um, you get it from three perspectives. You get it from mm, Charlie, you get it from his sister and his younger brother. And it is just very much set in that Heartstopper universe. It's talking about Charlie's eating disorder around Christmas Day and his sister's reaction to it and a bit of her story and how his brother reacts to it. It was fine. It was sort of a sweet little story. It was literally an hour audio book. I listened to it on three times speed. It took me half an hour. So, or two times speed. I don't know. Um, it was fine. It was it, nothing particularly memorable, but it was a nice addition to the universe. If you love that sort of hustle of universe, you you will enjoy this. Yeah, and it was just, it was fine. I I played my Switch and listened to this and it was, it was a good half an hour of my life. So I can't complain. <laughs> then next up, I was kind of gifted by Faber Books. And this book is out now if you're interested. It is The Lost Love Songs of Boise Singh by Ingrid Purcell. In this, we follow four women and they're all connected in some way to Boise Singh, whether um, sort of it's, they love him, they hate him, they used to know him and now they see what he's up to. And it's very much their story surrounding him. So you sort of get bits of his life well not bits of it his whole life through these women's eyes and their connection to him and as you can see it is a big book and it's also one of those books that it has no sort of speech marks or speech quotations you know if they're talking they're talking it's like a separate line and i have seen online that it has put some people off but my goodness it did not put me off i absolutely adored this book i thought it was really captivating. I loved each of the four characters' um, perspectives that we get. I thought they were so well done. They were so different. They all had such different personalities and I liked each one. It absolutely devastated me at one point. I couldn't, I was just sort of heartbroken by it. I think this is in my top 10 books of the year so far. It's so cleverly done it's it's like i said it's a big book but it's so engaging right until the very end uh i just loved it i loved these women i loved their stories i loved their personalities i loved it i loved it i thought it was so beautifully done i think 
it's emotional at times. Like I said, absolutely devastated me. I, I was like, oh, but I just thought it was brilliant. It was, it was a joy to read. And it's a big book and I could not put it down. I read this in less than a week. Now, if you know, you know, sometimes it's a book a week for me, but I read this less than a week, couldn't put it down. Any spare second I had, I was picking it up. It is that kind of book. Then next up, I read Bad Habit by Alana S. Portero, translated by Mara Thay Lethem. Now, in this, we follow a young trans girl who is growing up in sort of this rundown community and trying to find their way in the world. That's a very simplistic sort of summary, but you should read it and find out what it's about. Um, what I will say is, this is absolutely one of my favourite books of the year so far. I know, two in a row. Like I said, April started off so well. This book is so unbelievably glorious. I think it really captures what it means to be queer growing up and seeing how easy it is for straight people to be themselves in their sexuality. I think it really captures that so well. This book made me cry so, so much just from its sheer honesty and its sheer beauty. And it's, I loved it. I loved it. I just think it's brilliant. I thought maybe it lost a little bit of steam towards the end, but that didn't bother me. It did not bother me. I, I could have read this forever. Like the way First Love is captured from that queer perspective and it just highlights, you know, how scary it is on another level for queer people was brilliant. It's some, it's something I've always felt, but I've never seen captured in a book and it's done it. It's done it. And it's done it in depth and detail and, and just beauty. I just, I was like, I was literally like waking up before work reading it and just sobbing and I had to go to work sort of all puffy red eyes, which is never fun, is it? But absolutely glorious. Cannot recommend it enough. I feel like I will reread re this book many, many times. I loved it. It comes out on May the 23rd, so check it out. I loved it. See, after that, I got ill. So then, two week break, then we're back into reading. And I did read Experience by Kate Young. Now, this is the story of um, Bet. Bet loves May. May loves Bet, but she thinks because Bet is, because May is the first woman Bet has been with, May thinks they should have a break. Bet should go out there, sow a wild oats, come back in three months' time, and they'll be together. And um, I saw the author talk about this at their event, um, at the Fourth State Live event, and she just says it's a sapphic rom-com. It is what you think it's going to be, and it absolutely is that. You know, she goes on a date, she meets someone else, they become friends, but you, you can see they're falling in love with each other. It absolutely happens. You know how it's going to end the minute it begins. But it's a fun ride. I think it was a little bit long. It's sort of 360 pages nearly. I think that's a little bit long for a, sort of a rom-com. Could have been taken, you know, could have had a few bits taken out. But it was fun. It was fine. You know, I didn't, I certainly didn't hate it. It was a good time. Sort of made me smile a couple of times. I wanted them to be together. Um, Ruth and Bet. I wanted them to be together. I wanted it to work out. So... I was happy that it did, but like I said, you just knew it was going to from the beginning. You know what you're getting into when you start reading it. You're just along to enjoy the ride. But like I said, a little bit long, just a little bit long for me. I could have been trimmed down a bit. But other than that, it was a good read. I think I gave it like three stars. And then, friends, I am doing a Women's Prize shortlist reading vlog. Well, I'm trying. You never know, do you, with me? You never know how it's going to work out. I say things, they never happen. But, um... So, to get myself ahead of the game, I decided to read Western Lane by Chetna Maru. Now, because I thought it was going to be on the shortlist, and it wasn't. But I, I'm doing the women's prizes from the library, so this is from the library. Um, so, so, like I said, I read it to get, get ahead of the game, and it wasn't on the shortlist. But I really enjoyed this. This In this, we follow um, Gopi, who, whose mum has died, so now she lives with her two sisters and her dad and sort of to cope with their grief they spend a lot of time playing squash <laughs> now that is, I know it doesn't sound great but it is very good it's one of those books that leaves a lot unsaid it's it looks at grief and sort of the things you grasp onto when you're grieving and the routines and the things you don't say like I said this book is a book that leaves a lot 
left unsaid. You have to fill it in yourself. You have to figure out why these characters are doing it because of their grief. Um, it's, yeah, it feels to me, it was shortlisted for the Booker Prize. It feels like a Booker novel to me, but it um it has stayed with me. It is a book that sort of is staying with me. I do find myself thinking about it. I find myself thinking about the characters from it and just, you can feel their sadness, although they never say they're sad. It's that kind of book. It's very much on the page, but never said. It, it was a good read. I'm quite surprised it didn't make the shortlist, but we'll see. We'll see what I think of the rest of the shortlist and, shortlist and whether it should have been on there, won't we? It's going to go back to the library soon, so I need to, you know, film this wrap up and get it back because I don't get fined. Then I read my non-fiction for the month, which was The Wedding Heard Round the World. Um, Michael McConnell and Jack Baker as told to Gail Langer Kurowski. I nearly didn't read my non-fiction for the month. I nearly didn't. I nearly didn't. But I couldn't break the streak. I couldn't do it to myself. But in this, um, it's just their story of how they... Um, got married when you were not allowed to. They 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 figured it out. I can't even quite remember how they figured it out, <laughs> but they did. They did. What I will say is, I really enjoyed sort of the beginning more when it was more about their love story. You know, they really loved each other. It was really sweet. And um, when it was more about sort of the love stuff and the technical stuff, I sort of found myself falling asleep a bit. But I I enjoyed it. It was a good read. What <laughs> I will say, like they really loved each other and. Um, like they wrote a letter. He wrote a letter. I think it was Jack to Michael. And he, and the letter ended with, um, oh, I can see it here. It ended with, it's as though I've seen the sky for the first time. Like when they fell in love. And it made me absolutely want to weep. And I kid you not, like halfway down the page. Because a lot of the time they're not living together, just where they're going to school and stuff. So... Although they loved each other, they had an open relationship, which, of course, if that's what you want to do, absolutely go for it. But, so you get that beautiful letter, and then halfway down the page, Jack writes a letter saying, like, yeah, I've got crabs, so I got it from someone. Was it you, or was it someone else? And couldn't handle it. I was like, whoa, what? If somebody wrote me a letter that I was with saying they got crabs from someone else, I'm not going to handle it well. I'm just not. I'm just not. And that's my main takeaway from this book. Because I wouldn't handle it well. But yeah, it was a fine read. I, I'm i glad I read it. Probably would it sort of disappear from my house in the next unhaul? Yeah, probably. But who knows? Then I read How to Leave the House by Nathan Newman. Now, this is the story of Nat West, who orders a toy to come to his house and it accidentally goes to his dentist and he gets the dentist passage and then you follow Nat West's life throughout this day and then you get a chapter on the people like he bumps into a lady in the street and you get a chapter on her he um goes to the dentist's art exhibition you get a chapter on him he finds a girl crying on the bench you get a chapter on her and it was good like I that's my bread and butter. I love, love, love that kind of thing. I love the connection. I love to see how it's done. But other than that, I'm not sure what the takeaway from this book was. Not every book has to have a point. I know that. But it wasn't sort of like fun enough to just be fun. But it wasn't, it didn't have a point. I'm, and I'm a bit confused by the ending um, at first I thought, oh no, I'm, I'm into this, but yeah, I'm just not sure what it was trying to do or say or anything like that. It's, it's not a bad book. It's very, it's like very modern. It's very, um, you know, it, well, it comes out May 2nd, so it's out now, but it feels very like 2024 of this year, which isn't always my favorite favorite thing it's just like it's very on the nose um but yeah it it was fine it was fine i maybe 2.53 i'm not sure but it it was fine the funniest wildest most original debut of 2024 then i read henry henry by alan bratton now in this we follow hal who sort of is 
the 16th Duke of, of Lancaster, maybe, and very sort of much in that traditional English world, but he is very much into drugs, very much into alcohol, into partying, and when he gets shot in the face in a hunting accident by his sort of enemy, they begin a romance. And that's sort of what the blab says, but there's a lot more to this. I think it's a book that has, it's been done before. It, you know, it's a, oh, well, here's what I say that, but the end, like there is a part of this, and I need to know, I did read it on a train, that made my jaw drop. It absolutely made my jaw drop. I still can't believe it. If anyone has read this, we need to talk because it, I just, I just, it shocked me. It absolutely shocked me. For like nearly 200 pages, it's rich. It's, a, you know, a rich boy doing rich things. Well, actually, they're not that rich. This is where I've, this is where I'm saying we've seen it before. It's a family that has money, but they actually don't have any money it's a boy that has had something traumatic happen to him and he's covering up with alcohol and and drugs. So we've seen it before. I sort of liked the enemies to sort of lovers, but it it, it had no payoff. And like I said, the, the shock sort of factor is, I think it's going to outrage some people in a way. I didn't see it coming. Maybe some other people would. I just don't know what to make of it. Like I said, if you've read it, please, please talk to me. I, I, I have finished it. I haven't sort of put it on Instagram yet. I haven't um, ticked off of my um, story graph because I don't know what to rate it. I just confused. I'm, I'm confused. I really am. And there was sort of no resolution to the book i'm still oh i don't know i don't know i know that's such like you're probably thinking what why even mention it jack because that was pointless but i don't i have no idea what to make of it i have no idea i have no idea <laughs> so that was it eight books let me know how many books you read this month let me know if you've read any of these let me know if you plan to let me know if you're reading the women's prize shortlist um april um april was bad may is gonna be better i'm gonna Keep my fingers crossed, April is going to be better. Um, chat to me in the comments. You know I love it. Feel free to like and subscribe because that's always, that was always helpful. And I will speak to you all really, really soon.